Today we're going to look at the free app called Snap Markup, which you can find and download onto your iPad. And then I also want to look at Christian Hook's work, who was the winner of Portrait Artist of the Year Season 2, and how he's influenced this experiment. All right, today we're going to look at Christian Hook's work. He is the winner of Season 2 Portrait Artist of the Year, and I just did a recap of that entire season. I wanted to look at his work because I find it fascinating, and I'm wondering if watercolor can do something like this, at least if my watercolor can do something like this. So he, he also has gone ahead and won an award for uh, Portrait Artist of the Decade, so he's the top of his class, where I like to think of him as the Christian Seriano, who was on Project Runway and blew everybody away and has a successful business. That's what happened for Christian Hook, which has not happened for the other artists that have participated in the program. So he's just blown up, and, and rightly so. So here's a picture of him at the competition in season two with two of his pieces. You can see the self-portrait behind and then the painting that he did to win his specific heat. But what I wanted to talk about is what he does with paint, which he does with a palette knife, and the way that he's able to put paint down and then create these false edges or fluid, fluid movement throughout a painting. And he also puts in what I call color spots of value and seems to have a sense for exactly how that can happen. I think I have a good sense for color value swap outs, but I, when I do it, I tend to incorporate it into the painting and so that it doesn't draw attention to itself. And I think he does that as well, but then he also kind of, I'm going to use the word decorates with color spots of value, which he's done here with a portrait of Judy Dench. See that red on the right hand side or that cerulean blue that's happening on her right cheek. I just find that really fascinating and exciting. Here's the painting that he did in the competition of Sir Ian McKellen. So I know that he grids to begin with. He grids an entire painting, then he puts down charcoal, and then he begins his process of painting. So I never saw what he did in order to create those uh, edges or the, those swipes of paint. But you can feel the energy of it. And I suspect if you have a medium like oil paint, it stays wet. And so you can apply more paint on top of it and maybe create some of this paint movement. And I've been thinking a lot, because I do, about how would you do that in watercolor? Wow, this is, this is probably my favorite one. I don't know why, just the idea of floating baby. Uh, I, it, yeah, this just completely captivates me. Because it's a good, it's just a good painting. It doesn't matter what it is. It's sort of halfway abstract and halfway realist. So my question was for my own self is, can I do it? And I thought about it and I thought, well, there's always a way in watercolor to figure stuff out. And so I'm just beginning to try to figure stuff out. But I also want to do it in a meaningful way. I, I can't paint something just for no purpose. So what I did was I first found two pictures that I found interesting enough that I would spend time with. This is my colleague Callie, and um, who I find always paintable. <laughs> so I wanted to incorporate her in a painting, and but I needed a setting. So in order to find a setting, I have several pictures of my the interior of my house which I kind of enjoy the interior of my house because it has, we well, can see the beams going across horizontally and then it's got those French doors which are vertical. I could feel kind of the energy of shapes and also motion. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to combine those two things together. And then I thought, all right, how are you going to combine those two things together? So I thought, well, what I need to do is use the app Snap Markup. Now Snap Markup, is, I don't, it may be free. I don't think I paid anything for it. And it's very rudimentary, unlike Photoshop. So what you can do is take a photograph, which is what I did 
Oh, no, no. So what, what you do is you take a photograph, and in this case, I'm just showing you again what I'm going to try to do. What I want to do is put the dog in the setting of my house. So I, I need to do that manually. I don't do that on Photoshop. I just have to draw that in. This is where Snap Markup comes into play. Once I had a painting pretty nearly done, then what I can do is I can take a picture of it with my iPad, and go into the app Snap Markup. Snap Markup allows you to select certain colors, not a lot of colors, I think there may be 10 at the most, and you can apply them as an overlay on top of whatever your photograph is. So I wanted to see, could I put some of those shapes, like what Christian was doing, into my painting? Now, this was just in order for me to see would it would it work as far as a composition? And I thought it kind of does. It's not as obviously it's not as bold as what Christian does or as good as what Christian does, but I wanted to see is it something that I could incorporate and start to investigate in my own painting. And Snap Mark allowed me to try a variety of different shapes and colors until I could find something somewhat pleasing. So the next thing I did was go back to the painting which I have, here it is. So I have, an, this is the way I would standardly paint a, a painting. I don't, I'm not incorporating any of the influence of what Christian does so far. So this is what I put into Snap Markup. And then I applied those colors to see what would happen if I was then to do the same thing manually. And let's look and see if that worked out. I wanted to put this also in so you could get a sense of the size. This is a 14 by 20 arch pad I work on on a watercolor block. So it's, it's usually I work smaller, but anyway, so here's, here's what I started to develop from what Christian did. And you can see just the beginnings of a little bit of the influence there. I still question whether that, <laughs> shadow or space or shape, what's it called shape. Shape should be pink underneath Cali. And I'm going to take it a bit further. You'll see one more slide where I take it further. But I tried different colors underneath with snap markup and nothing worked. And by worked, you know, that feeling where, oh, that feels right. And I needed that pink in order to balance the pink of the chairs. There are also some pink dots throughout. So I'm trying not to fragment, but I'm also trying to make the eye um, move around. At the same time, I'm trying to use two different photos in order to tell a story. And the story is, you know, Cali in my home, because uh, I painted this for myself and, and I plan on, <laughs> I plan on slapping it in a frame and, and putting it up because it's, it's, you know, it's fun for me. So let's take a look at the final slide and one of the draw here's is this the final no here's the final slide where I just got a little bit more aggressive with those spots or shapes as Christian kind of influenced me to try to do. I I definitely want to try this some more because I think there's potential for some interesting exploration. I am not saying in any way that I have the kind of talent or gifts that Christian has. My point in all this is that there is something called snap markup that you can use when you're in that place in your painting where you really don't know what to do and you need to, to try some things. And in watercolor, as you know, you can't erase something and you can't put things on top. I mean, you can to some extent, but you it, it's a much more technically hampered medium than oil paint. So that was my experiment for the day. Uh, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color, and please join my YouTube channel. If you're watching this, please join. So many people watch and they don't join. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.